All right, so in this system of equations, I have x squared minus y squared is equal to 28, and x times y equals 48. So I'm given two equations. Let's just say that this is equation 1, and this is equation 2. So what I want to do is find the value of x plus y. So what is the value of x plus y? And finding this is very simple when we find the value of x and the value of y. So to start, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use my second equation here. So equation 2 is x times y equals 48. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for one variable in relation to the other. So it doesn't matter which one, but for this case, I'm going to solve for y. And to solve for y, I have to isolate it, meaning I have to get rid of this x by dividing both sides by x. So I get y is equal to 48 over x. Now, using this equation, I can plug this back in to equation 1. So equation 1 is x squared minus y squared is equal to 28. Now, here we got y is equal to 48 over x. So if I plug this in for y, I get x squared minus 48 over x squared is equal to 28. Now I can substitute the 2. So I get x squared minus 48 squared over x squared is equal to 28. Now, I'm going to multiply both sides by x squared. So now, for my left-hand side, I have to distribute the x squared. x squared times x squared is x squared squared, or x squared to the power of 2. Now, I have this minus 48 squared over x squared times x squared. These two x squared cancel out, so I just get 48 squared. And now this is equal to 28x squared. Now I'm going to subtract 28x squared on both sides. So I get x squared to the power of 2 minus 28x squared minus 48 squared is equal to 0. Now I'm going to set u equal to x squared. So I get u squared minus 28u minus 48 squared is equal to 0. And now I can solve this by completing the square. So I'm going to add 48 squared back. And Now I get u squared minus 28u is equal to 48 squared. Now I'm going to add this, so negative 28, or we can say just positive 28. I'm going to add this divided by 2 squared on both sides. And if you, don't, if you guys don't know what completing the square is, you have to go watch a video on it. So I add this on both sides. I 28 over 2 squared on both sides. And 28 over 2 is 14, so I get u squared minus 28u plus 14 squared, which is equal to 48 squared plus, again, 14 squared. And now the reason I did this, the reason I used completing the square, was because now I can factor this out. This turns into u minus 14 squared which is equal to 48 squared, I'm gonna rewrite as 50 minus two squared, and 14 squared, I'm gonna rewrite as 10 plus four squared. Now from here, u minus 14 squared is equal to 2500 minus 200 
plus 4 plus 100 plus 80 plus 16. And now if we add these up, we get u minus 14 squared is equal to twenty five hundred and if we take the square root on both sides we get u minus fourteen is equal to positive or negative fifty so we get two equations now we get u minus fourteen is equal to positive fifty and u minus fourteen is equal to negative fifty so u minus fourteen is equal to positive fifty I get u is equal to sixty four and u minus fourteen is equal to negative fifty I get u is equal to negative thirty six Now, remember how we let u equal x squared. So this means that x squared is equal to 64 and x squared is equal to negative 36. Well, we can't have a number squared equal to a negative number. So this is wrong, meaning that x squared equals 64 is my only proper equation, and if I take the square root on both sides, I get x is equal to positive or negative 8. So these are my two solutions to this problem. And I know that I said this wasn't work, but there actually is a way we can use this to find solutions, not real solutions, but imaginary solutions. So to do that, what I want to do is x squared is equal to negative 36. If I take the square root on both sides, I get x is equal to square root of negative 36. And the square root of negative 36 is the same thing as the square root of 36 times the square root of negative 1. Now the square root of negative 1 is the same thing as i, so I get x is equal to the square root of 36 i. And the square root of 36 is the same thing as positive or negative 6. So I get x is equal to positive or negative 6i. So these are another two solutions. And these aren't real solutions, but these are imaginary solutions, which still count as solutions to this problem. So my four solutions are x equals 8, x equals negative 8, x is equal to 6i, and x is equal to negative 6i. All right, so in this problem, I have m minus n squared is equal to m squared minus n squared. So to solve this problem, I'm going to first start by rewriting m minus n squared. And I'm going to rewrite this to m minus n times m minus n. Now from here, I'm going to expand this by multiplying these two. So to multiply these two, I'm going to first start by distributing the m. m times m is m squared. m times negative n is negative mn. Now I'm going to distribute the negative n. Negative n times m is negative mn. And negative n times negative n is positive n squared. So I have this is equal to m squared minus n squared. Now, I can do a few things here. I can first start by subtracting m squared on both sides. So this way, these two m squares cancel out. And now I'll be left with negative mn minus mn plus n squared is equal to negative n squared. Now, negative mn minus negative mn is ne equal to negative 2mn. And then now if I subtract m squared on both sides, these two cancel out and I get negative 2n squared. Now from here, I can divide both sides by negative 2. So then these two negative 2s cancel out, these two negative 2s cancel out, 
and I'm simply left with mn is equal to n squared. Now from here, I'm going to subtract mn on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and I get n squared minus mn is equal to 0. Now the greatest common factor in n squared minus mn is n. So if I factor out n, I get n times n minus m is equal to 0. So now this gives me two equations. I get n is equal to 0, which is already a solution. And I also get n minus m is equal to 0. Now, going back to our original equation, we have m minus n squared is equal to m squared minus n squared. If n equals 0, I get m minus 0 squared is equal to m squared minus 0 squared, which turns into m squared is equal to m squared, meaning m can really equal any number. If m equals 5, then I have 5 squared is equal to 5 squared. If m equals 100, I get 100 squared is equal to 100 squared. So m can equal any number if n is 0. Now for here, I have n minus m equals 0. So if I add m on both sides, I get n is equal to m. Now, if I put this back into my regular equation, I, get, I have m minus n squared is equal to m squared minus n squared. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rewrite n as m because they're both equal to each other. So now I have m minus m squared is equal to m squared minus m squared. m minus m is 0, so I have 0 is equal to 0. And this means that They're both equal to 0. So now going back, what I'm going to do is do a different method to solve this problem. So method two is, first let's rewrite the equation. We have m minus n squared is equal to m squared minus n squared. And now this time, I'm going to again expand m minus n squared to m minus n times m minus n. And now from here, I'm going to rewrite m squared minus n squared as m plus n times m minus n. Because if I have something in the form a squared minus b squared, this is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So now, as you see, we can simply divide both sides by m minus n, cancel these two out. So now I'll be left with m minus n is equal to m plus n. Meaning, if I subtract m on both sides, I get negative n is equal to positive n. If I add n on both sides, I get 2n is equal to 0, meaning n is also equal to 0. And if n equals 0, then remember how we already tried this out, m is also equal to 0. So these are 
my two solutions to this equation.